to this again. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> That was a really good opening, wasn't it? Yeah, it's nice to have something a little fresh and new. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, we're back after a year. A year off. A year off. We just basically rested for one year. It was, it was a little, very restful. Very restful and peaceful. Very restful. It was basically uh, just looping on the Pirates of Caribbean. Why Why didn't we do any, any podcast for one year? Well, that's not true. We did the uh, Chasing Turtles podcast, right? That's right. So, yeah, those were kind of the comeback podcasts. And you can check them out at turtledoc.com. www.turtledoc.com. Yeah. Or you, they're on the Faux Pop TV uh, YouTube channel. They are there as well. There's not much uh, there. If you, seven if views, six if you're a, views. If you're a subscriber to the Faux Pop Faux Cast on uh, Faux Pop uh, on iTunes, you've probably already seen them. Yeah, I, I'm assuming there, <laughs> all there of are you, yeah, all of you hundreds there are of many, thousands many of people who have seen them. Yeah. But that we don't, we already agreed we don't do this for the audience. We do this for ourselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to do something, isn't it? Yeah. Sadly. It uh, so why don't we start with talking about what happened a year ago? What got us so deeply off track, would you say, from our normal pattern of life? Well, a year ago yesterday, an F2, was it an F2? F3. An F3 tornado ripped through our town. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, my uh, home and studio is right in the path, mm -hmm. which uh, basically there's been no equilibrium, ironically enough, which is what a tornado is just trying to do is to bring a state of equilibrium. <laughs> it's it's attempt. <laughs> I don't know. You've really anthropomorphized the tornado. The tornado is really trying. I just want to get to equality. Of some kind of balance. What, did, what was that all about? Hey, man. What did you just do there? Okay. What? There we go. We're back. Most people who listen to this don't even know what just happened. There's yeah. a video component, folks, and he was just switching back and forth. Well, let's just say the hustler's out of practice. This is the first time doing this in over, right. in over a year. I lost all my templates, all, all of my settings for uh, the live switcher here. So mm -hmm. I just threw something quickly together. So uh, I apologize for the spinning ball. <laughs> it is pretty nice. <laughs> and the uh, very, very crude uh, graphics. This is so crude. But uh, uh, people who are didn't come here to watch TV, did you? No. They came here to figure out what is up in this world of ours. What have you been doing for the last year? Anything interesting you want to talk about? Well, any changes, life changes of any sort? Many life changes in a year. Really? Yeah. The tornado swept through the winds of change, as it were, Yeah, came through and mm -hmm. uh, eliminated my, not eliminated, but but pushed us out of our dwelling, my mm -hmm. uh, little girl and my wife. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had to vacate for a number of uh, weeks. Right. Um, then finally got settled back in. For those that know, we live in a town called Godrich, and you lived on the square, which was yeah. right in the path of the tornado. Right in the path of the tornado. And, and the thing about the tornado is that day your wife was calling me and you were calling me and we had no service. It's crazy. And uh, there was a lot of chaos. But the funny part, well, funny, the odd part was I thought, oh, I'll just you know, drive up the square and see, you know, how she's doing. And that's how I found out that everything was crazy. It was nuts. Yeah. So that brought some changes for you is what you're saying. Big time changes. Uh, you know, we finally did get settled back into our apartment. We live right on the square. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess had just settled in and found out we were having another little child. Uh, another, from the tornado. The from, tornado impregnated your wife. Yeah, somehow, immaculately. It's incredible. It is incredible, actually. It was just trying to seek equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right in there. Well, so yeah, you've had another baby since then. Another baby, and that was the catalyst for looking at our little apartment with uh, one bedroom mm -hmm. and realizing, okay, we've got a two-year-old now who's growing up and needs some space and needs a yard and place to run around and... Mm -hmm. uh, a new little one on the way, so a little baby coming. Started looking around for 
uh, another place. And uh, right now we're sitting in the new... The Hustle House. Hustle House, which I'm not even living in yet. This faux pop headquarters. Yeah. Again. But still renovating it. But uh, we've got the office here. Mm-hmm. Need some art on the walls and stuff, but... Uh, yeah. We could know. just do graffiti on the walls. Yeah. That'd be kind of... We could. Awesome. Uh, so you have a house. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you switched the video again. Well, there's been there's been a bunch of other changes too because you started working on Just Us Hunting. That's true. We had a TV uh, show. Just Us Hunting TV show me and uh, my brother worked on uh, like the crazy post and you did all the, the directing. I did the directing and of very little of the show, let's be honest, <laughs> and stuff. But you got a real education in getting things ready for TV. Like oh, you sure, were burning yeah. many candles at every end. Many, for that. yeah. Basically, there was two of us doing all of the soundtrack, post production, color grading, um, you know, and then encoding for the proper formats and all that. For, yeah, he uh, was doing television. He was doing the cut, and then you did every other thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Manny did a great job at uh, assembly editing, everything, and story editing. And that's just us hunting. That is a show about a family of bow hunters, mm-hmm. the Marchands that live here in Godrich. And uh, 13 episodes. What station did they air on? Out West, right? It's, uh, I don't know. It's Shaw a, it's on a, it's Shaw. A, it's a Shaw thing for sure. It's kind of interesting though. I mean, there's a, it's hard to believe that the first show that we really get on the air is a hunting show with us not being hunters. It's just a real twist. Mm-hmm surprising let's see if i can find a little uh, episode uh, just to give people a little taste people can taste some of that bear yeah now in a future episode they're going to see what just happened i guess rick just got a big one up there 620 some pounds 12, yeah 20 some pounds so here's there just, they are yeah there's are the marchands i just grabbed one uh, real quick um trying to figure out what to do with season two right now it was only a matter of seconds. Here's old Carl. So the thing about this show is these uh, these guys shoot it themselves. They shoot the episodes. And then they come back and we sort of help them tune it into a... Uh, whoa. Oh, I see what's happening. Sorry, I have something unplugged. Oh, well. That's all right. It's all right. Anyway, there you go. There's there you old go. Rick himself. And they shoot, uh, they shoot the episode, then they bring it back, and we help them turn it into a, a show. There's the problem. There it is. You found it. Oh, that is... We're going to cut that out, I think. That cut out that relentless assault. Oh, no, no. They'll get it all. That was many months of you working on that. Many, many months working on it. What months did you actually spend so much time at that? Do you remember? Um, what was it? When was that thing at the livery when they launched it? it I was, don't remember. You know, it was it was January. Uh, was episode, the first episode so you, going to air? And, and you just it seemed like months that that's all. Well, you there did. was yeah, basically thirteen episodes. Once we got into a flow, it was well, it was basically turn, basically turning one around every week. Yeah, yeah. But that was like night after night after night. Yeah, it's like three months straight. And then work. you. Uh, you were working on something else that we can't talk about Correct. most recently. <laughs> yeah. Lots. But that was some custom video work. Yeah, there's been a lot of work. A lot of and time I, consuming work. And I've had to because one thing you discover when you buy it. What's that? Old, what do you discover? What's this? When you buy an old house, you realize and you start I renovating and fixing things up, you realize that things cost money, <sighs> dollars. And it's a huge mistake oh we've gosh. made where we we have done a lot of stuff for free. Over the years. Well, yeah, we've uh, given our time and our energy and our sweat and our goodwill and hearts. That's and why I'm so glad that we're selling these podcasts <laughs> and making so much money from them. Finally. People, yeah. uh, I have to say, the response to this one has been incredible. Yeah. Even though we just started it again. Yeah, we've only thought about it. Mm-hmm. And the response yeah. we've been getting on Facebook and Twitter. and It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's been incredible. Social networking has really uh, uh, been superseded by psychic networking. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of the end result, isn't it? It's kind of what, what the, all of this is leading up to. Some say. Yeah. It, Actually, possibly. you say. I do say, I think. I guess I say too, but down the road. Yeah, we're not there yet. Well, no. we are and sometimes we are. I think that high school kids are there. They're never not texting their friends. Right. So they're always networking. They're hive mind now. They're not separate people anymore. Sure. I don't know. I said this to my daughter today. I said, uh, who's 16? My daughter is 16. What 
is the end result of a society where, and I'm not complaining per se, where people don't know what it's like to be alone. They're right. They're only together all the time. And I said, what happens if your phone stops? If you don't have a phone? She says, I don't even know what I would do. Meaning not just that she would feel panicky or whatever, but she doesn't have hobbies that would right. uh, replace the loss of that. Or so it seems. I mean, I'm sure she, you realize she plays piano and all these other things. Sure. But, but you, you, get the, you get the point. The point of, of it is that it is a significant factor in their lives in a way that, you know, we would never, we, we would never have a, a corollary. I don't think you and I as kids, 16, 17, we didn't have something so deeply no. networked. I mean, what we had is still here. You know, when we were 16, you know, what did you do for, for like quiet time or to relax or to chill? You'd go for a walk in the woods or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, Listen to music in a very, yeah, uh, very lone, <laughs> lone pursuit. Strum your guitar. Yeah. Play your drums. You Talk know. on the phone to a person, one person on the other side. Right. Very, it, it's a very different experience. It's interesting. And again, I say, what is the end result of that? Like, well, this, I, I think, I think what happens is you see a, a group of people who, um, they're used to solving everything, their problems, the problems around them as a sort of group mind or a hive think. Mm hmm. And they may be the individual folks, the people who are loners are seen as weird or freaks or twisted or something's wrong with them, right. you know, yeah. in a way that is, is far more powerful than when we were kids. And those people maybe will get marginalized, you know, out, you can't solve problems in the team. So you're separate, you're other. It's weird. It but, is. And it's, there's either two outcomes, I think, like they could go, uh, you know, get more and more that way to where, mm-hmm. you know, the singularity type stuff where you have, uh, yeah, we're all man a machine and we're all online yeah. or a solar flare could, uh, hit the earth and mm-hmm. it's all gone. Right. And, yeah. and that's where the real rubber's going to hit the road uh, mm-hmm. with, uh, there's no pun in there. Is there? Well, actual rubber, actual rubber hitting because, the road. Yeah. You'll be out there with rubber shoes running down the road to escape zombies yeah, or something. Hopefully you'll have good shoes on, not barefoot. Yeah. The um the big disaster, I don't believe in it. Did you see that Wired article? I think it was in Wired about uh why we're apocalyptic, why we always think the end is coming and the end is no, near. No, I'm curious to hear what the synopsis was on that. Well, I won't I won't go into it. You can go and look for it. We could Google it up and find it right now, but the the bottom line of it is uh we always think the end is coming and maybe part of that is that our our end is always coming. Right. Right? So we want to superimpose it we are micro macro and it's hard to believe that everything just keeps going on just fine without you, you know? Right. It's interesting. Uh, it's this thing you and I've talked about before when we did it again, when tragedy occurs, some people say, why me? But when tragedy occurred to me, my first thought was to say, well, why not me? What makes me right? Why would I be any, in any way immune to, terrible things happening. Yeah, I agree with you on that. That's uh, kind of been always my stance as well. I don't like like, it. No, but we're not, I mean, we're we're all the same. We're all, all, oh uh, boy, I know, I I I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to say that and he's going to do do that. No, what I mean by that, we all um, face the same things, right? That is true. If we think we're special and immune, uh, that's a fallacy. And, and, and also the flip side, if we think we're disgusting and awful and horrible, um, that's also a fallacy, right? So, so you have people on both sides of the fence. You have people that are egotistical and think the world revolves around them. And then you have mm-hmm. people that, you know, nobody loves me, nobody cares. But the truth is, if you looked exterior to each of these individuals, these, uh, these, these avatars are just presented here, they're facing exactly the same thing. So the probably the the deeper question is, what is it that makes one person uh, accept uh, the fact that, you know what, this is just shit that's happening. Good things and bad things. You know, that mm-hmm. happens to all of us. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like if a good thing happens, one person would rationalize it and think the stars are aligning for them, for example. and every, Or that they prayed and God yeah, interceded. Sure, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. All kinds of things. But if something bad happens, then it 
immediately flip. So there's a lot of contradiction in that uh, mindset. Well, I think what people do is they turn everything into something about them. Right. I prayed for this. It happened. Uh, I was bad and this happened or, well, you know, I thought about this today when I was, I had just ridden the exercise bike for an hour and I was drenched with sweat, had a shower. I have photos, which I'll post on the faux pop website of my shower. It was really good. It was a good, (laughs) I won't do that. I'm a middle-aged man. The only thing worse than seeing those photos would be photos of both of us showering. Uh, Yeah. That would be bad. Like if we had a big team shower. (laughs) Terrible. Just like high school all over again. Those were some bad days in a way. Uh, yeah. Like I used to just shower, right? In grade, right. say grade nine. And people say, hey, let's go shower. Yeah. I never got too involved in the horse play. Right. And yeah, I always thought, just this like, horse play is sublimation. Yeah. Like there are some deeper issues at work here. And I always thought, if you want to see and touch other naked boys, that's fine. But don't try to hide it with this kind of, I don't know, aggressive right. homo, uh, uh, I would say homo, uh, phobic, um, sort of activity. There was this activity that the, the most likely people to be gay were the ones who were like wrestling with other naked guys and then calling them gay. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I always thought, look, if you want to look at naked men, you should just admit it and do it. And, and be happy with yourself instead of this snapping towels at the buttocks of the boys around you and sure trying to wrestle them all hot and wet and naked. Did we get off track? Uh, yeah, I, I was trying to think uh, about that. And uh, yeah, we got off track. I was riding my bike and I saw a guy sitting on his porch, a really obese man. Mm-hmm. I was riding my bike to the gym to lift weights after riding the exercise bike. Mm-hmm. And I saw this obese guy on his porch and he was smoking a cigarette. Right. And I thought, how dare you? What? Sit on your porch? I turned it into about me. Right. Why do I have to go to the gym? Why do I have to ride right, the right, exercise right, right. bike? And you can just sit there. And he gets to sit there and smoke a cigarette and be uh, an obese man. And, you know, he's probably got a, a, a large sandwich. Right. And I was, I and sort maybe, of. Uh, maybe he's happy too. I don't know. Well, this is what I'm saying. This, I turned it into being about me. Right. How dare you get to do that, whereas I have to do this. But you you could do that. I know. That's the thing that's so stupid. Yeah. We turn it into being right. him smoking and being there and being obese is somehow some kind of comment or has something to do with me going to the gym. My choice is somehow right. impacted by his behavior Sure. to not go to the gym. But where that comes to fruition is when he lives to be 96 and when someone we all know who who is a healthy person lives a healthy life dies young right right and you that that at that point you say okay what's happening here what how can this fit right well random right yeah and that's why we're there again yeah absolutely random just like the thing that uh disrupted our lives the tornado tornado ripped through a year ago you know what are the chances of it ripping directly through the center of a town how about you know, it's tragic that one man was killed, but... Absolutely. Wh- Sorry. It's tragic that one man was killed, but what's crazy is that nobody else was killed. Yeah. By this. It's, it's, it was amazing. It's weird. And you, someone might call it miraculous. Miraculous. Miraculic? Miraculic. <laughs> they might call it miraculous. <laughs> they might even call it miraculic. They might. No. Um, was there anything else you did in this year that you think is good to talk about? This year has been very busy. Um, I don't think it's been a particularly good year in some ways. Well, I, depends how you look at it. I mean, it's it's always good because we're, there's always momentum and always moving forward. You know, like uh, the fact we're sitting here finally. Not after. recording. What? Look at your counter. Oh. I don't know how long it's been not recording. Uh, not long. Two minutes. Um, it must have been a... Damn. It looks like I lost it, too. Must have been a what? There must have been an end point loop. Okay, it's still there. So let me just continue on from here. I'm still recording up here. Oh, so we're live still? Yeah, we're, the video and audio is still good. This The audio podcast will have a little bit of weirdness there. Hmm. Uh, the, yeah, those that watch the video are going to get a little special uh, extra. A look behind the scenes. A look behind the scenes. 
Uh, what were we talking about? BDS. We were talking about this year. Well, you said you thought we were moving forward, but in some ways I think some things didn't move forward in a way that, well, let's look at it uh, from the perspective, not just of, you know, doing some of the projects that we're doing. Yes, we're still working on the turtle documentary sure. mm-hmm. in a way in, in a cycle, like we're in a circle, we're going around on the yeah. merry-go-round, we're making the same documentary, we're shooting during the same times of year, shooting right. some of the same people during the same times of year. Sure. So there's a feeling of cyclitude there. I made that word up. I don't think it's real. It's a good word. Cyclitude. There's that, a cyclical sense that, you know, when, when s- some of the projects that we've been involved in have, like the tornado came up, mm-hmm. <laughs> we started working on a tornado documentary sure. and now here it is a year later and you're still working on a tornado documentary. Like right, there's just, this kind of sense of no sure. escape. Yeah. And I'm going to jump in again. Mm-hmm. I bet you can count on one hand the number of times we've been out for a man walk or something like that. You know, just some kind of, yeah, not idle time, but you know what I mean? Well, what that all, everything you're saying there is all circumstantial. It's all, it's all based on circumstances as opposed to will or effort or, 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 or what you want to happen. Like, I mean, it's, it's life. In a nutshell, all condensed, you know, you could look at this year, like with the turtles, you know, uh, Paramount decided to make some cuts, you know, all this kind of stuff that, you know, may or may not have affected us, well, but it did change our course. Right. Paramount and, shut down production for an unknown or stopped production or something yeah. for an unknown amount of time. And that somehow affects us, even though we're not tied to Paramount in any way whatsoever. Right. But we had have certain marketing ideas and plans. So the plans shift, right? So same with the tornado comes. All of a sudden, all your focus is initially on, uh, on you know, make sure your family's safe. And you've right. got... And then we lost a project know, there. Right. And, and you know, I had to break into my house. I had to become a burglar. And, mm-hmm. and my, you know, th- you had to learn all kinds of new skills and things in order to survive. For when a you say while. that you had to become a burglar, that's misleading. Yeah. I, I mean, I just once a couple times had to break into my own house because it was all under, uh, what do they call it? Um, martial law? No, no. Uh, there was a, an environmental rule that you couldn't go into some buildings. Yeah. But it was under, basically if you did, the law didn't protect you, whatever that's called. Like if I walked hmm. into the square during that time, it wouldn't you matter. You could kill someone; it would be legal. No, well, vice, yeah, or anything, anything I did, like there would be no, you wouldn't be covered by insurance. You wouldn't. Mm-hmm. You basically had no rights. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be arrested on site, basically. So whatever mm-hmm. that's called. It sounds like martial law, but that's not. I'm what sure it is. that's what they called it. They called it martial law. I seem to remember those. They words. declared martial law. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, so like I had to FLQ crisis. I had to sneak in through my back window to get some, uh, you know, baby stuff and things like that that we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, baby oil, baby oil, etc. But I say all of that. I hate the word baby oil. <laughs> the words baby oil. Yeah, baby oil. Poor little baby oil. Mm, drip, it's just dripping it out. It's gross. Yeah. Listen, uh, I want to say something that I did this year. Okay. Because. I was trying to make some progress too, you know. I wasn't just sitting there <laughs> waiting for you. No, you, though you were, but I, yeah, I, I was, and were. I wasn't. I was doing other things at the same time. That's right. I started working with Patrick Boivin, mm-hmm. um, and I want to talk about the Doctor Paul video. Yeah, and I want to put it up. Do you want to get it out, or do you want me to get it? Doesn't matter. I can get it up here. Okay, you get you go talk. get Doctor Paul. Um, I, I'm a, I'm an MMA fan. I'm a, a big fan of the UFC and, uh, I'm a huge fan of George St. Pierre. So when we were doing some work with Patrick Boivin here in town and Mark, you'll remember that, that work, mm-hmm. we were shooting some stuff here at the bowling alley, another project that's in a state of flux. Um, while we were there, Patrick mentioned to me that he was working on a secret project for Google. Right. And it was a viral video for Google's forthcoming tablet called the Nexus 7, although we didn't know the name of it at the time. So whilst the shooting was going on in the bowling alley, he said to me, do you have any ideas about, you know, an unboxing video that would have... Oh, you lost me. Okay, no, 
an unboxing video that the Galaxy Ninjas that had come up in other videos, the three colored ninjas, would tear open the, the package. Right. So that morphed into me jump, jumping through some ideas and throwing some stuff at them and going into an area where uh, I came up with a character called Dr. Paul. And it went to a point where we got George St. Pierre to play Dr. Paul. Mm -hmm. So just play that video if you would. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Yeah. Welcome. It's loud. Yeah, yeah it's that's loud. really yeah, loud. It's loud, folks. That was, uh, I would describe it as almost excruciating. <laughs> Let's start over again, yeah. shall we? So anyway, this yeah. video was shot in Montreal <laughs> in uh, early June on a weekend. I'm going to fade it up. And uh, that's George St. Pierre. It's from a script that uh, I wrote based on Patrick's Patrick Boivin's idea. And we shot in, um, you know, this is in a, an apartment by the producer, Stefan Tange. And then we went to a studio for the next bit. So let's just uh, let this play. I'm bringing it up. Corner. I'm the internet's Dr. Paul. And Patrick did that graphic. Today we've got something I've been dreaming about for years. Hmm. Do you hear that? That sounds like awesome. All right, let's get elbow deep. How is that one? Oh, nice. Google's Nexus 7. Let's take it to the couch. Yeah, there he's taken to the couch. All right, kids. Okay, here's where it turns into something amazing, I think. It's pretty incredible. So Patrick's stop motion work here with these action figures is jaw dropping. Yeah. Because you would think that those are real people. Oh, I know, it's amazing. There are people who do think that. Yeah. Really got a tight ass, eh? Oh, he's just like a, a muscle. <laughs> he is a muscle. So this was this was a day's shoot, and I think it was pretty much just the afternoon or late morning to early evening to do the whole fight scene. And of course, there were stand-ins for some of it, but those things that are smashing, those are sandbags. So he's picking up and throwing sandbags, and that's a sandbag, for example. And that actually hurt him, but I'm not here to tell that story. Awesome Superman punch. He's a charming bugger. The great smile. Virtual jelly bean. How many takes for that? That's that's not a real jelly bean. Oh, it wasn't? It's CGI. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just keep being surprised. Well, it's just to make it easier, right? It's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm going to brag in a minute. Anyway... Uh, I saw this when when Patrick first sent me the, the first cuts of this. Smith, there's your name. That's true. So now you know I'm not lying. Writer Randall Lobb. When Patrick sent me the first cuts of that, my, my chin hit my chest. Like, I couldn't believe how good it was, right? Well, what do you notice about how many hits it got? Uh, 378. Yeah, it didn't go viral. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, I, obviously, I would think that's incredibly successful, but I know compared to other things that... Uh, yeah, it, it's not. Not compared to what some of his other videos have hit. So there's this sense, like, you know, did we do something wrong? Is there some, you know, some way that it could have been made differently or, or marketed differently? Or, there are many factors at work, but I can't believe how good it was. Oh, it's fantastic. It's, it's shocking. And this guy is so talented. He's so amazing. Yeah. And and what a privilege to work with him. But just goes to show you, you can't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Oh, absolutely. Or, or, or even right. what does work mean, I guess, right? Well, uh, yeah, I guess what, I mean, you look at that, it's successful regardless. It's artistically um, what it needs to be. It's, yeah. it's just so good. And it it accomplished a lot of a lot of uh, firsts for, for a lot of people, like uh, for yourself. And <clears throat> oh, for, yeah. It was uh, good for me, yeah. Um, that was his first acting debut, wasn't it? It, it was, uh, first... that character was the first time he'd played a character. He wasn't playing himself, yeah. So I think that Josh. surprised a lot of people. And I, and I bet you, you know, you have it labeled as Dr. Paul, you know, like mm -hmm. it, you'd have to discover this, right? Well, so, the idea was they thought the bloggers would, would push it. Right. And... And maybe that didn't happen in the way that, you know, it could have. 
I don't know. I, and you know, it's not my place to comment. Yeah. I was disappointed that I thought it would get more hits faster because I think it's shocking. I think it's amazing it how is. good it turned out. And I would say it's not over yet either. I mean, no, no, it's, you know, it could have it. It could get discovered and, you know, yeah, uh, anything can happen. Anything can happen in this crazy world. But I want to say this, um, you know how the, the you get an opportunity to meet someone who you might be a fan of, right? And mm-hmm. and there aren't many people that I would say I'm a fan of. Right. But this guy, Georges St. Pierre, he's much younger than I am, obviously. Um, you know, so it's not like you don't look at someone like that and think he's like a font of wisdom or something like that. But what he is a fountain of is discipline and physical right. skill. Amazing, and this yeah. idea of... Uh, relentless pursuit of perfection and and a lot of these elements you know that that come to, to into play for someone who's in mixed martial arts anyway so i'm a fan of his and and his disciplined approach and a lot of things about what he does and i meet him for the first time and of course he's unerringly super nice to every single person on the set he didn't do anything that would make you think he had an attitude he couldn't do enough takes he did take after take after take if that's what was wanted. Um, you know, he said to me, uh, I I struggle with my English. And of course he doesn't. He doesn't struggle with his English. You know, right. like on every mm-hmm. on every level, he was a humble, incredibly kind, super nice guy who was in, an amazing, uh, you know, I guess f- for... For the idea that he's not an actor, he did a great job of acting. He did a fantastic job. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he did his physical performance. It was great as well. But the thing that made it work was he was game. Like, mm-hmm. you could say, well, why don't we try this? And he'd say, yeah, let's try it. Yeah. But, oh, well, I'm kicking this. Here's the thing that was most shocking. We're sitting in that set and we're waiting for some setup stuff to happen. And I'd been running lines with him because I'm the only... Uh, English guy there. And when I say English, everybody spoke English, but I'm the only native English speaker. So they want to have me say lines. And then, you know, he gets the rhythm of the line in an English sense, right? Because he's a Francophone and he's uncertain about, you know, this English line. Am I saying it the way it needs to be said? Now, of course, he said it the way it needed to be said every time. But anyway, I'm running the lines with him and just saying, yeah, you want to try this or try that. And Or if we need an alternative line, you know, writer's job is to come up with an alternative line if something didn't work so we're running these lines back and forth and uh there's a downtime and i say something about the books on the wall or there's a certain number of books on those bookshelves right right and somebody made a comment about them and i said oh yeah what do you read and he says uh paleontology oh, wow. and i said what? <laughs> I thought he was kidding and he said paleontology uh, yeah i love paleontology i, I love dinosaurs and Wow. All this. And then he started to get really excited and he pulled out uh, his iPhone and he held it up for me to watch a 10 minute video about Neanderthals. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. and is, you know how you, you, you have something you're so excited about yeah, and you yeah, have yeah. to watch the person yeah, watch you it. Watched, you have to get more joy just watching. So that. he's watching me watch it <laughs> and he's looking at me like, yeah, you see, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Look, me, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I was yeah. saying, holy smoke, like, it, it, a, it's cool. What the the information that he had is interesting and controversial, um, but the thing that was so amazing was you, you can't make assumptions about people. That's right. athlete meathead. Yeah, that's wrong. Right. Sure, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He says he belongs to this society, anthropological society, paleontological wow. society. He gets all these videos and all this information every month. He you know he belongs to basically a, a list serve where they send all these packages out and he's obsessed with this stuff and you know you think of him backstage at some event or whatever Mm -hmm. what's he listening to what's he reading you don't know if he's listening to his ipod he could be listening to a lecture on right neanderthals to get pumped up because i mean he's uh he's just not the guy that i thought he was he's better which is cool Mm -hmm. that's nice when that happens yeah it's amazing because it's often the opposite especially with people that you do see on the screen or whatever. Of course. You know, on you the know, screen, they're playing you go, a role. Hey, so, wow, he must be an amazing person and they're going to be an idiot. Look, I mean, I this this whole bit comes <laughs> off with me, you know, basically rubbing his back, but it was just interesting to work with someone like that and, mm-hmm. and find out that the guy 
surpasses the expectation Mm -hmm. for everybody. This isn't just my opinion. Everybody was talking, you know, when he'd walk by, everybody would say, this guy's the nicest guy there is. Mm -hmm. And do you want to do that again? Do we need to do another take? And what did he have for lunch? French fries and chicken. Saint Hubert. (laughs) And I looked at him and I said, really? That's awesome. And he said, "Eh, good genetics. And he laughed. (laughs) No kidding. No kidding. Good genetics. Well, that was definitely a great experience. Yeah, that was great for you, man. The days after the tornado, I had just, no, two days before the tornado, I had just started a a feature screenplay uh, for Patrick, and I got it done October 6th or 1st, I can't remember which, and sent that off, and uh, over the next year, I drafted a few drafts of that, and over the next year, we hope to make it. So that's another thing that I did was writing this feature for him in that year and then working on some other stuff for him. So, you know, that was a good year in that regard. It's yeah. nice to work with someone so talented and, no kidding. you know, hopefully he can, uh, <laughs> hopefully he can find some stuff that I'm doing. That's good enough to match his abilities because his abilities are amazing. He's really, really talented. Very talented. And speaking of nice guys, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He was great to work with when mm-hmm. he was here in town. Also, you know, it was nice this year. It, since it's like a New Year's episode and we're thinking about the year when we went to Northampton and we met Peter Laird mm-hmm. in April. Yeah. And that was a great day in general, which we can talk about in a second. But one thing that I want to say about meeting Peter Laird was I was struck by how it was really rewarding to watch him watch the stuff that we had shot, the documentary Absolutely. stuff that we took for him to see. Yeah. And to see his face, you know, his he was just grinning ear to ear. He was just loving it. Mm-hmm. That's really rewarding too. It was. That was good. Very rewarding. That was a good high point. Yeah. Yeah, you got the photo up. Oh, that, that right back here. Seeing all yeah, that. there it is. I'll get this. Uh, <laughs> you get it all figured out. I will get back on track with this. There he is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that, you know, he looks proud in a way. That's the funny part. Oh, yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah, like, he really does. He's the father of the turtles. It's like, it is like that. It's funny it's that like he's he proud. Be, uh, it's almost like he's the president uh, uh, in the, the Hall of Presidents at Disney World, the way he's just sitting there somehow. Yeah. I have a big, goofy smile. You're smirking. That's what's <laughs> funny. And Isaac's smirking a little bit. He's kind of got a... Huh. A yeah, but a, but Peter just looks really proud. And I thought, yeah, man, that was a great interview. Just it to, was. Just to, to have an interview like that that works so well and to show the clips after and have him respond so positively, that was yeah. really awesome. Yeah. yeah, we've had some great experiences this year. Well, Mark, what did we do? This year? Well, that I, day. Things we... Right done, after that. We went to the United Nations and <laughs> presented a film that was very, very interesting. It was amazingly interesting. Right? So it's like, <clears throat> you say, you know, we can look back at the year and there's, yeah, there's been a lot of change, but I think, uh, what's why I say there's also been a lot of forward momentum because in the... In the midst of all the change, we've still, you know, kept pushing on the best we could. I mean, I basically been working with a mm-hmm. laptop out of a on whatever dinner or dining table I could find just to kind of keep things going until I could get my office set up back mm-hmm. here again. That that United and, Nations thing was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was. It was very interesting. It was. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was. It was kind of a double edged sword for me, like in the sense that you, it's pretty cool to be there and you see. You know, there's a lot of good people. It's it's like anything. So when I say this, I'm not actually dissing the United Nations. But what you realize is that there's so many levels of bureaucracy and so many levels of uh, uh, well, uh, probably important things that have to be done for anything to be done in the world. But you realize that big problems are just work issues for those people there. Yeah, that's I guess I guess that's the and they just keep saying next. So if Mm -hmm. you walked in and. Do you remember what it was that interrupted? Like we had a thing to happen at a certain time. Yeah. And they said, oh, it's pushed back by an hour because of some thing that was happening in Somalia. Right. But it wasn't like a crisis in Somalia sort of situation. It was like, oh, we got to go do a press thing about yeah. Somalia. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and of course, yeah, that's why I'm I'm not too quick to judge because we only had a little snapshot. Yeah, we don't of even know what it was. A few different people, but it was this idea that eh, next, next. There was that sense, it, which it wasn't unfamiliar at all. Like it, and it wasn't even surprising to be honest. I guess if you're at the hospital and your life crisis is just some nurse's job. Yeah, you know, right. 
So it's what's the difference? You're there? right. Macro back to the macro, micro macro, thing. micro. Yeah. But something that that whole, you know, that experience being there, it's almost like it's better to say you're doing it than to do it. Like the feeling of we're going to present something at the UN. Mm-hmm. It sounds like more than it is, doesn't it? Like a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you're there, you realize this is an office building and yeah, it's just shaped differently and it does different. It means work. it seems to mean more to other people than it does to you. Like it's really just par for co- par for the course, you know. But I wonder if I wonder if it's it's that way because we were we had a certain level of professionalism that had to be hit. Well, why don't we just without talking about what it was, say what happened. You were shooting some stuff mm-hmm. um about an issue related to mines and landmines. Mm-hmm. And so I had to present some stuff to an audience with uh you know a different agenda than we thought we went there thinking we were talking about this particular project and this particular issue right and then i was handed a sheet of paper oh you're also introducing this This project and this issue right and these people (laughs) and you know okay (laughs) and then there were layers of protocol on top of that don't forget to mention this don't forget Mm -hmm. to mention that and you realize very soon that uh, there are masters to serve at different levels. Mm-hmm. And then when you were shooting, you saw it from the other side, like they were sort of performing for you. Sure. Like you, yeah. They stopped being above us really quickly, didn't they? Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And w- it's interesting. And I think the key to that, and maybe why we as a team are good at going into those kind of situations is one, we don't esteem people higher than you know just because of a title or because of well i uh, had to no no I, you do <laughs> no but it's it's out of like you have no problem bowing when you have to bow you know what i'm trying right, to say but then and, now you're now you're going to work for us that's right so right. You, you because you're not seeing them as oh you know oh, you exalted know, yeah but if you you know if you have to go through protocol or do this or that you know we can do that no problem i'm trying to be really careful about what i say because sure. of the certain yeah. amount of turmoil that came out of the the thing but it, it was interesting it was a it was an experience it was really interesting you know, and i you know it was like it's just one of those things you could say you did and you didn't expect uh, mm-hmm. that you were going to do so and it's always nice to be in new york love uh, love and love and hate it yeah well it was pretty traumatic trying to get out yeah and that's my fault 100 percent my <laughs> fault Look, I had this, I was just in Europe this past summer, right? Mm-hmm. And there were, and, and same in LA when we were in LA shooting in July. Right. It turns out that the Tom Tom is making these distinctions about which way to go. Right. And I can either look at the name of the road in the sign right. and get it, or I can look at the Tom Tom and miss it. That's what right. keeps happening. Right. Escaping from New York, escape from New York has never been more traumatic than that, I think. That was traumatic. <laughs> we just kept missing. But we it's got... my fault. <laughs> you were getting short with me. I could feel it. Because uh, you felt like you knew exactly where to go. Well, I don't know. Backseat mm-hmm. driver, classic alpha first who's, born. Who's wearing know. the daddy pants? Yeah. You know, another thing we should talk about that we did this year was Out of the Storm concert. That was that's pretty year. interesting. Yeah, that was good. That was in Thanksgiving. That was a lot of work. That was something we did. Another giant amount of work by with the hustler. A whole bunch of people uh, from the town working together, and that that big concert that uh, you know did a big concert downtown with uh, Matt some Gidden, big bands, Arkell, Nice to Fresh West, and mm-hmm. yeah, a bunch of big bands, and it all happened was pulled together in what, very short order. Yeah, three to four and weeks raised a lot of money. Yeah, raised a uh, quarter million dollars for the town rebuilding it was uh you know and the beautiful thing about it was all of these people coming together in fact i was thinking about this yesterday um you know he canada am was at our town yesterday broadcasting did you go down and see it i was only there for the last bit Mm -hmm. but i was sitting there observing and you're seeing all of these people you know with signs and sense of pride and and you know there to support the town and Mm -hmm. uh, Here's two reactions that I had. One was in something I've had throughout the year, even though I've been immensely immersed and busy 
with the rebuild well, and you were being on part the of the master committee. plan and all of this kind of stuff because you do want to see your town restored. Mm-hmm. But there's another side of it that goes, this is really nothing in the grand scheme of things. You know what I mean? Like compared to th- other things that are going on in the world and other things people are suffering. You well, know, like Japan. And, yeah, it, this is just not even apart from disaster, the things that are happening every single day where someone can't even get food or some, you know, they're just going through atrocities. Right. So really our little blip in, you know, yes, we had one casualty and the number of people injured and a lot of people lost their homes. But really, you know, yeah, there's some horrible stories, but insurance has, you know, got us back to a pretty yeah, good the, place. The, the pieces were being put back together pretty quickly. A lot of money has been many donated. People. And so all of that's good. You realize so, there are people the insurance companies haven't helped. Oh, yeah, cetera, yeah, yeah. So I, that's why I'm not negating that. And it's right. and it's horrible. And I'm not saying uh, there shouldn't be frustration over that. But <clears throat> what was I saying? What I was. So that's one side of it. You can get cynical and kind of think, oh, you know, like look at us all being whatever about this and it's really nothing when all this other stuff's going on in the world and then it kind of struck me seeing all of these people together that you know anything that brings people together into a common focus regardless of what the focus is so sort of like um, is important the nazi party back in the 30s in germany well it yeah. really brought people together sure wait a minute well but wait a minute but to your point it shows you the power of that i would right? say that we still need, you said, regardless of the purpose or regardless of the focus. Sure. I think I it, right, some are jump, bad. You're some jumping bad. on that. Right. Regardless of the focus. But I think we need to make sure that we bring people together in the best way possible. You know? Yeah. Well, anything that brings people together in a positive way. There, that to, will th- get to think that. about something positive. Shows you. Uh, <laughs> that was a weird mouth sound you yeah, just did there. It just shows, a choke. It, you know, it's encouraging, I guess. And I thought, well, this is good. (laughs) (laughs) And I rested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did. You thought it was good. Yeah. But if you can, if, and how rare that is, I think is the other thought I was having. Like, you know, we're, we're so busy in our lives and we're, we're going on day after day doing, you know, doing, doing caught up in minutia, hardly interacting with anybody. Um, So it's good that we have take the opportunities, I guess, as they come along to, to, to kind of work together and to focus on something that, you know, may not be important, but the important part is that you're actually, uh, coexisting with your fellow man. Well, I would say that I agree and disagree. I think that the issues that are important to you are the issues that are important. Sure. So if you have a problem, you have a hangnail or you hit yourself in the foot, that's your problem. And if somebody else has a brutal, horrible, terrible, worse problem, it doesn't mean that you don't have a problem. Right. You know, you just have the problems yeah, that you yeah, have. Yeah. Right. And yeah, your problem's ridiculous by comparison, you know, but, you know, to you, it's still a problem. Oh, for yeah, that yeah, yeah. Particular yeah. moment. That's right. That's why. You, so yeah. our little tornado year. Yeah. It was bad for some people and not so bad for others. Right. But, but it was a problem that we had. It was a problem we had. And the only way is forward, you know, regardless. Like I think a lot of the people who are listening to this uh, would agree that one of the worst problems with it was the, the podcast stopping. <laughs> yeah. Where is that source of enlightenment and encouragement? People don't and, have the information <laughs> the that information. they need. That's right. Beep, 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 beep. That's just in. That's just in. It's, it's, that's, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I think this <laughs> problem, I just kicked the, the camera. Sorry. I think part of the, um, I'm going to fix the camera. Part of the problem with this first podcast back is we are we haven't been as entertaining. Well, we're just explaining ourselves, making excuses, explaining ourselves. Time obviously, ears. technically, my brain is split. So between what and what? Between the technology, making sure it's working. I mean, I've just kind of patched this together. This is the first test, and it's not. Uh, you know, my hands aren't. Are you I, thinking you don't want to use this one? Oh, we can use it. It's okay, isn't it? I don't know. Well, I thought it was very powerful. Yeah, there were some powerful some moments. Some good moments in it. Someone uh, will watch it and listen to moments of it, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Probably just you. <laughs> I think you will watch it. We did talk a little bit about being older, uh, fatter, and balder. Yeah, if we did an A, B of our very last podcast. Yeah. That could be or are you actually going to do it? 
I don't know why not. You just say uh, it's pretty. It's pretty grim what happens to you with age, isn't it? Uh, like it's yeah. a. It's creepy. It is. What wrong? Uh, I mean, you know, we we get old. Our bodies begin to fail us. We get our hips replaced. We gain weight. We lose our beauty in a way. But we gain so much wisdom from all this. How can we convince younger people that we're still valuable? That's what worries me. Mm -hmm. How can we tell those young people out there, you know what, we're still awesome, as awesome as we were. Oh my God, look how young we were. So, uh, oh man. Look wrong. at that. What? Do look we, how young we look. We're pretty much it's the same. Incredible. We? Well, I've grown a beard since then, <laughs> and your hair is grayed more. Like that is one thing I notice almost all the time. Do you? Yeah, how much my hair is grayed. Is has your back hair gone gray too, or is it mostly still black? Uh my hair has gone pretty gray. You know, uh are you balding more too? Yes, I definitely am Maybe. balding more. You know what a lot of people uh, accuse me of doing? Dyeing my hair because I'm not gray. And I'm wondering what percentage of that is just because they see me around you sometimes. Like uh, what if they see me with you and right. they think those guys look similar. They're around the right, same age. Right. How come one guy's gray and the other guy's still got black yeah, hair? You, you must you must dye your hair. Yeah, but I don't. Look how young I look there. It's incredible. Yeah. Wow. I what was I thirteen there? Fourteen in that <laughs> shot. Amazing. Uh, just for the record, I don't dye my hair. This is my natural hair color. It is pretty black. Do you remember the time you dyed your hair? Yeah, for your brother's wedding. Is that what it was for? Yep. Why did you dye it for my I brother's have wedding? No idea why I did that. I don't understand why it, why for the wedding though. Like uh, how was it linked to the wedding? I don't know because it was something special that I'd do for him. Because <laughs> the my, gift that was your <laughs> wedding gift. He's my friend. I thought, look at these young That's guys. Nice. That's not even that long ago. That's like seven years ago. You look like the day you got married, right there. That's because when my hair is longer and I have shaved, I look younger. That's funny. Except for the jowls. The Jowls. The Jowls would be a good name for a band. <laughs> we should form a band called The Jowls. That'd be a great name for performing nightly. It's with awesome. With Kira Knightley. Uh exactly. <laughs> performing with Kira Knightley. Look, you gotta stop going through these well, it's people a, <laughs> who are listening don't I'm, see that. No. The hustler tends to fiddle with things. Well, I'm uh, learning my craft. That's nice to learn your craft. I don't like that shot. I got to say, I'm going to fix that again. Well, after uh, looking at those handsome devils and those other shots, whoops. man, look at us now. I know, we've really gone to seed. I do feel like I've aged a lot this year. Well, you haven't That's looked after sure. yourself. Uh, I've just been busy. Yeah, you're right. I haven't. I haven't slept hardly at all this year. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> It's actually true. It sounds like a joke. No, it's, it's actually true. true. And I've had some back issues, neck mm -hmm. issues, and nerve issues. How is the trigeminal the last Actually, few days? Actually, you know, the last few days has been fantastic. I it's incredible. And did some acupuncture on uh, Monday, and I'm going again tomorrow. Can you tell people what the trigeminal thing is? Uh, trigeminal neural neural neuralgia. Neuralgia is something I've been diagnosed with. It's I have a blood vessel and a nerve that come up through my spine here mm -hmm. that are touching each other. Or mm -hmm. It comes from years of hunching. Punching forward like this one. Well, working. he probably needs glasses too. And he looks at the computer screen and he thinks if he hunches his neck forward, he'll be able to see better. It's more just habit. You know, you're always leaning forward. So I've been trying to break that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's good to break. basically, it's just kind of unpredictable. The wind could blow in your face mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, you might hit your nose right here. What What about the shower thing? That's one thing that I that, find that's most That's when I first noticed it uh, about two years ago, having a shower just subtly. But you have a shower, water hits your face, and it's just like intense pain over your over top of my my eye, like this, like feels like hornets. That's the best. You've thing. often said fifteen hornets. Feels like, like 15, fifteen hornets. Hornets landing on my uh, on my head and stinging me. This this camera's <laughs> loose. Just so you know, All that right. is not me doing that, folks. <laughs> the camera just became loose from its moorings. Oh. So Mark's had this tried the hustler. Mark Hussey has had this trigeminal 
uh, neuralgia yeah. and you've been dealing with that. Yes. What uh, what other issues have you been dealing with? Your back's getting bad. Well, that'd well, be a great podcast for old people. <laughs> my back's getting well, bad. Well, my back's bad. I got boils. I got boils. Got problems with hemorrhoids. My, my toes are all bunions. Yeah. What are bunions? I, I don't think I know. Are I they like know. corns? I, I, I guess. I have no idea. We no could Google idea. it, but let's not. That's not. I think we're at 58 minutes. Yeah, we're there. Look, uh, I'm going to apologize for this podcast. This hasn't been a really <laughs> good one. I think this was bad. Do you? I do. Well. Are you going to listen to this one? I don't know. Maybe it was just a practice. We'll see. Why don't we see if we like it? We'll see if we like it. See if we put it up. Um, I think we did hit some nice topics. Yes. But we, I, I think we weren't having enough fun we need to have more fun with it well yeah what do you think true we will have more fun you said 58 it says 53 uh it's 58 actual remember we lost some minutes over there oh lost time missing time yeah creepy there's a little lost moment so all right well uh i think i'm gonna say i look forward to doing this again soon and we're going to build up some content and people are going to be flooding back oh yeah they'll be flooding back it'll be antediluvian yeah. No, it'll be diluvian. I don't know what that means. Antediluvian so. means pre-flood. Oh. So if it'll be diluvian. It'll be a diluvian. Oh, like the deluge? Is that where it comes I'm, from? Yeah. Deluge, guess, yeah. deluge. I don't know. I have no idea. It'll be a deluge of people oh. listening and enjoying the fact that podcasts are now in session. Yeah, it's just nice to be back. Thanks for listening. And it's, I ruined it. You had it. Say that again. Just say it one more time. Uh, it's nice to be back. Thanks for listening. That's that's a good ending. Oh, okay. Okay. Again? No. No, no, no. I, <laughs> We're done? Hit the stop? Just wait. Why don't... We, okay, you said it's good to be back. Thanks for listening. And then I should have a catchphrase too. So when you say, thanks for listening, what what did mine used to be? Like I used to have one. Catch you on the flip. You had a whole bunch of them. Toodles? Did I say toodles? toodles? Oh, you probably did, just like Mickey Mouse. He says toodles? Yeah. Oh, toodles. Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Says toodles? All the time. No, he does sure not. does. Did you know that I thought that I made up uh, oh, that, goodness, that fish it's... cray, and I didn't? <laughs> I said that fish cray, and I thought it was pretty funny, and then my kids are like, Dad, that was like six months ago. Nah. How disappointing is that? Hey, man, we're just all, uh, we're all connected. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's a good one. We're all connected, and then I snort, and then it's over. <laughs>